So our data set pretzels, that was the first one we looked at that just had the browning quality. Pretzels two, I added in this brown spots, which was a count and we used the Poisson distribution. Pretzels three is gonna add a new column, um, which is this sample size. So now I'm gonna pretend that I was counting up the brown spots out of a certain number of locations I was looking at on that um, uh, pretzel. So I could see this data in this way where I have a, a column for the count and a column for the denominator out of how many. And again, these do not have to be the same number. This number could be a six. This number could be a three. That's okay. If you have a different denominator for these things, that is all right. You can account for that. I'm, I actually want them all to be out of seven, um, but it's okay if you have different numbers for the denominator. Another way this data often appears is as a, a proportion where we would have, let me uh, click both of these columns and right click new formula column. I'm gonna combine them by doing a ratio. I want it in the order they're in, brown spots divided by N. If I wanted it the other order, I'd use this one. So I'll use this ratio and here's my proportions. So zero out of seven is zero, seven out of seven is one, three out of seven is 0.43 and so on. So either of these, either this combination of two columns or this proportion column, either of these things can be used for the binomial. So we're going back into our add-in, we're going to generalized mixed model, and we're gonna use both of those columns. So I still have this other one, brown fats over N, but I'll use these two columns together. I'll use brand and temp as my fixed effects and interaction. My random effect is oven. And then my distribution now is binomial. That's the distribution for the scenario where I'm counting how many yeses there are out of a certain number of things I'm looking at. So I'm checking seven spots and each one I'm saying, was it brown? Yes or no. I'm counting up how many yeses I had out of the total number. The canonical link function here is the logit. If I leave it blank, it will choose the logit or I can choose the logit. Sometimes for binomial data, because of these probabilities, people will use the probit link function. So that's not an option here in this add-in right now, but the, the reason that we give you the ability to select between them is because there are times where people will use a non-canonical link function. But we're going to use the logit here either by selecting nothing or by selecting logit. And then we're going to click run. So again, it's iterating and then it gets Con to convergence and gives us the last least squares. So this is again on this uh, logit scale. So our last example we were looking at on the log scale, now we're looking on the logit scale. So these estimates are on the logit scale. Again, lots of highly, the data are all corresponding to each other. So we're seeing the same story in any of these versions of the response. Um, so everything's highly significant again, still highly statistically significant for the uh, interaction. And so we'll expand the effect details. And we'll see the brand by temp. This is this is what's super interesting to us right now. So we might have also wanted to look at these variance components um, to see how much residual we're explaining with the oven. Um, it's actually more than half of the um, total variance is coming from the oven uh, for this binomial example. So here we can again right click to choose the more columns things or option right click to select multiple things together. Then hover again and right click make into data table. We're gonna need to transform these three things but not this one. And we can turn this into the two variables again. So, so the opposite of logit is the logistic function. So we go to new formula column transform, um, here's logit logistic is the opposite of that. So let's do logistic. The logistic is like a proportion from zero to one. So these are corresponding back to that column that we created called brown spots over N. That's what the logistic is giving us things back on this scale, this proportion scale. Notice that this 
uh, variable that was created. Actually, both of these variables that were created are identical to our column because uh, that's how the uh, binomial is working is it's taking our two columns and it's turning them into these proportions. So we need the logistic as our back transform now. So lower 95% new formula column transform logistic and upper 95% right click uh, new formula column transform logistic. So what we're seeing here is the centrality tendency for the baking soda 400 group is about 30% brown spots with a confidence interval from 20% to 43%. So that's what we're creating is that information. Then we can do this right click here and do new formula column character first word and last word and clean those up again because we still need to fix the delimiter. So, um, whoops, I want to click in there, comma, quotation marks, comma, quotation marks. So I've added the delimiter and I'll call this, this was the temperature. This one was the brand, comma, quotation marks, comma, quotation marks. Okay, so there's my temp, my brand, my back transformed least squares mean, my back transformed lower endpoint, back transformed upper endpoint. So now I can go to graph and graph builder, create that same kind of plot as before. I'll pull in the back transformed least squares means, the lower and upper back transformed I need to drag into interval. I'll spread these out by temperature on the x axis. I'll put brand in the overlay. I'll connect them with these lines, I'll right click in the plot and customize to make the two error bars fatter and the end caps smaller. So I hope you're seeing so many cool things you can do in jump while we're also learning about the add in. And I could add, again, I could double click this if I wanted to mess around with the axis or things like that. There's a lot of other things we can do too. If you wanted to put a picture or an image or something as the background or just change the color, you can change the background um, from graph. You could put a background map if you're doing something with maps. You can uh, change the background color here. So let's maybe make it this pale gray. So many things you can do here, but when we're done, we click done and then we've got our plot. This is back transformed on the original data scale, which in this case is proportion. So we're seeing the this measure of centrality for the uh, baking soda at 400 and then a confidence limits on that and so on. This one's really tiny, really tight because this was the group that had zero for all of the observations. So it still made a confidence interval and it also doesn't even include zero. But again, that's because it's the edge of the um, possibility. And so it can't really capture that edge. Okay, we covered a lot. We covered mixed models in general. We covered fitting with a Poisson distribution for count, and we've used the binomial for proportion or for number out of a denominator. So the final thing I want to mention is where you can get more information. And that is, again, you can go to that add-in download page, download the add-in, and also find seven more examples and a couple more videos covering those examples. And also you can post your questions at the bottom of that and, and ask Mei Chen Dong, the author of this add-in, uh, any questions that you have, or you're welcome to send questions to our email address for the academic team at academic at jump.com. So stay in touch with us. Let us know if you're doing cool things with the add-in um, and best of luck to you.